Hey Leroni here, thank you for joining me in today's video and today we'll talk about painting what you see. The more I paint, the more I come to the realization that what separates a good painting, a great piece of art, a masterpiece piece even, from other paintings that maybe were kind of done haphazardly is having the reference, the subject matter really touch me in a way that fascinates me and wants and makes me want to paint it. And that's what I'm going to show you today. So if there's any takeaway from this is don't do it exactly like I do it. And heck, if you don't find this photo inspiring, don't even paint that, right? Find the thing that inspires you. Now, I do think that seeing someone doing something freely and following their own inspiration and passion can inspire others to do the same. And perhaps that's something that uh, I can achieve with this video. Uh, if you want to learn how to paint like this, be sure to check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course. Of course, more on that later on. Let's jump into the process. So here it is. I'm starting with the drawing. Uh, this is a very cool um, part of the process that I personally enjoy quite a bit, um, especially if it is a simple enough subject matter uh, that I can just draw it in one go. There's something that really attracts me to the directness uh, of drawing in one go, which is why I also love pen and ink. It's the same kind of concept. Uh, one thing I'm paying attention to with these types of, you know, garlic and onion, they tend to have a lot of cross contour lines, like these lines you see I'm drawing right now. Uh, I want to make sure that these follow the contour, the, the actual shape of the vegetable. It makes it look much more convincing and believable. To me, it gives sort of a feeling of structure that uh, gives me better confidence for the next couple of stages. Now with that, now uh, remember, take everything I say here with a huge grain of salt because this isn't about how to paint like me, this is about painting what you see. Now, one of the things that really attracted me to this reference photo is the main onion that I'm painting right now uh, that has this sort of right half that is a bit on the green side, believe it or not, that's what it feels to be at least, um, which is actually a very gray and muted green, but compared to the rest of the warmth in the picture, uh, it it is pretty significant. I, I can tell that there is a bit more coolness there. Uh, and that transition is the thing that sparked um, the most of interest in this scene. Uh, which is fun, you know, it's fun finding that thing for you. And uh, and if you don't, if you find yourself suffering through the process, one of the things to, to maybe ask yourself is, am I actually interested in painting this thing, <laughs> whatever it is? Um, you know, I don't know what answer you'll get, but I'm saying that's one thing that may be worth asking. Uh, now, you'll notice how I'm not using wet enough of a mix, so things are, I'm at risk of things uh, maybe... Uh, creating some cauliflowers and some mess, but uh, I'm, I'm treading that line. Uh, I'm close, but not quite there. Now notice how I'm increasing yet again the warmth as I move down towards down and left. And that is what gives this onion its, I think that's the main attraction to me in this uh, scene. So that's really nice. And I do want you to see most of the process of that first wash uh, in the very direct way in which I paint it. Uh, so I'm going to do some uh, work while it's still wet to increase the, the strength and the darkness here on the left side. Uh, what I'll end up needing to do is to darken the right side as well. Uh, because it wasn't uh, strong enough. There's actually a pretty even distribution of values on the onion. The difference is not in what's dark and what's light. It's more about what's cool and what's warm. Um, now, there is a bit of a shadow there. I love putting those shadows in while it's still wet because uh, it helps blend the object with its environment. Uh, that's something I really like. Uh, I find that it allows you to... Um, have some smooth transitions in there uh, that are, for me, it's very fun seeing two shapes kind of merge together. But you know, if that's not your thing, that's okay too. Uh, you'll notice this with the next onions that I paint as well. Look at how the edge touches, right? The the shadow and the, and everything. And it, it's, it starts to bleed in there. And, and I think it looks fantastic. I really love these transitions. Um, even after things start to dry a bit, uh, there's a tendency to be really scared of what will happen. Um, more often than not, um, it's not about a hard and fast rule of past this moment, don't do wet and wet or don't let shapes touch. Uh, that's, that's BS, you know. Uh, there is no rule such as that. Um, it's more about what you feel like doing in the moment. 
Um, and perhaps what your past experience, your personal past experience, um, pulls you towards. Uh, and many times that will translate to putting shapes, quote unquote, too late, right? Or to let shapes blend too late or to go over a wash that is a little too dry uh, because you just had to play around with it now. That's, there's no rules again. Now look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to blend the shadow in some uh, strategic places, uh, mainly where the shadow fades, right? It fades as it goes to the right and gets a little farther from the thing casting it, which is the onions in this example. Uh, now, one thing I could do now is lift back some highlights. Uh, I just didn't think it would be necessary, but later you'll see me adding them back in, uh, in these two onions in particular. Uh, let's put in another one behind them. Uh, all the onions are pretty similar here, except for that main one, right? The main, the main feature with all its uh, lovely variety and temperature. Um, that was the one that's a little, you know, uh, outside of the ordinary. Uh, and of course, the purple onion, which we'll get to now. Now look at how I am just letting it, again, letting the washes touch. Um, so one thing I like to do is I look at my subject matter and I realize, okay, what's the lightest color there? And I recognize this purple that lends itself really well to my Crenacridone rose. Uh, so I just use that and that is almost my underpainting initial layer. The only difference is I'm not letting it dry, but rather I'm going to come back immediately with some dark paint um, and start adding shadows on top of that. Uh, because they're quite blended. So I'm using a mix of French Ultramarine, Queen Aquadron Rose, a bit of even, um, uh, there was a bit of um, Pyral Scarlet there. And also uh, later on, maybe I'll add a bit of, there you go, you see a bit of that neutral tint. Uh, the colors I'm using aren't that fascinating. Uh, Queen Aquadron Rose, Pyral Scarlet, Turner's Yellow, uh, Lemon Yellow, some... Uh, uh, neutral tint as I showed you and French Ultramarine. Later I'll add a bit of Thalo Blue. There may be a bit of Thalo Blue in that first onion too but one thing to realize is people tend to obsess over colors but when you have a lot of muted colors in particular uh, there are multiple ways of mixing them. The more muted the color is the more ways you have usually. It's not a rule again but the more ways you usually have uh, to mix it. Uh, a very neutral orange can be mixed with Pyro Scarlet, with Cronacodon Rose, with many different reds and many different um, yellows as well. Uh, but when we're talking about very bright specific hues, that's when it becomes a little more important to start with the closest color, but still not a must, because who says we have to paint the exact colors as we see them, right? Um, something interesting is uh, I had another painting that inspired me making this video and I'll show it to you uh, in the outro so you want to stay uh, around for that for sure. Uh, it's very interesting because then I got there I got everything perfect but uh, here it's gonna be a lot of imperfections uh, but that's fine. So as for the garlic um, this is a great opportunity to really up the ante once again with the warms and cools uh, just because it's it's white so it's very reflective it's gonna reflect you know, some coolness from the purple onion, some warmth from the, uh, you know, relative uh, coolness because it's still a red, right, a purple. Um, and then some um, warmth from the other onion. So it's a great opportunity to play around with that, uh, which is why I love painting garlic. I love painting white objects. I find that they're, they're easier for me than uh, what maybe some people make them out to be maybe a little more challenging. Uh, I don't have usually issues with that. Uh, we'll do a little wet and wet once again to get those cross contour lines indicating the individual uh, teeth or uh, cloves. Yes, cloves it's called uh, of that bulb. <clears throat> which is very nice. Now I do want you to uh, take a moment and let me know in a comment down below uh, what's your biggest takeaway so far from this video. This will help you uh, better understand, better internalize what you do learn. Now uh, my goal really isn't to tell you what to do, never. Uh, it's more like let me show you how I work, especially how freely I work and perhaps I can inspire one or two people to, um, to do uh, their thing in a more free way, you know, because sometimes uh, some inspiration can uh, can help someone um, realize maybe what they're missing or what they're, you know, uh, without giving too much of direct instructions, which again, I don't like doing as much. Uh, look at, by the way, those three onions down below, how nicely they dried with the their background there. 
uh, dark background. I love that kind of a thing. I love these loose edges whenever possible. Now, uh, the thing is you can always add a hard edge on top. Uh, so sometimes to me, it's a great thing to do for later. Keep a smooth wash, if I can, a smooth edge if I can, and later on I can decide if I want to keep it or not. Now, some things that bug me right now are the white gaps between the onions. I would have ideally worked a little more, like let things merge even more, uh, but that's fine. Now, with this other garlic, I'm still playing around with the temperatures, maybe not as extremely as the one on the right, uh, because, you know, uh, I didn't want things to compete too much with each other. Uh, it's more to decide. Uh, that's how I, I choose the very original way of things that are more outside the the f the the center physical center of the painting. I'll go with a bit more muted colors usually. Uh, now I don't have a good plan for the shadows, by the way. I don't plan, you know, they'll reach up to here or the. It's a very open-ended painting in a way, right? I don't really care where things end. Uh, I care much more about the. Uh, the the center of it, the heart of it, the onions, the garlic itself, rather than the shadows. The background is white anyway, so it doesn't really matter, you know. Uh, now I have a very dark mix, uh, but I do hope for some of it to blend because this is still wet. Uh, I would say it's 20 or 15% wet, which is not much, but you will see if you give it a few seconds that these lines start to just disappear a little bit, just a little bit. I don't want them to fully disappear anyway, I just want them to smoothen out a bit, which is exactly what happened. Uh, okay, now before we get to some other details, uh, I do need to increase the strength of some of the colors. So here we're especially reds around the onions. If you look at the reference photo, you'll notice there are some pretty strong red and orange areas there. Uh, and that really brings out uh, the contrast in value as well. Not just the color that looks beautiful and is very bright, uh, but also the contrast in value, uh, which isn't too strong, but it is, it is there. I'm adding a bit of Turner's yellow to the mix so that I can cover up the rest of the uh, onion with that, uh, while keeping things a little lighter there around the highlight. Again, I'm going to bring back a lot of these highlights. Um, and then I'm closing off uh, at least some of the white areas. <laughs> Those really bug me now that I look at it. Uh, hopefully I'll get rid of most of them later on. Uh, but then I'm going to repeat the same process with the rest of the onions. Uh, I just want to use this opportunity while it's still wet to put in some, you know, uh, darks, uh, just to indicate the shape. That, that really helps with the shape and the structure, uh, you know. And I'll go back to that idea of paint what you see. Uh, if something catches your attention and you'd like to show it, go for it. Uh, I think a lot of people in the beginning, they have the mindset of, I'm going to start with the techniques. I need to improve my techniques. I need to improve my result. And then the style will come and then the personality will come and then I'll do things more my way. Here I am closing, by the way, the contrast, making it a little darker. But in truth is whatever you practice is what's going to happen in your painting and in, in your uh, artistic journey. So um, there's no reason for a self-imposed rule of first I must work on my technical side and only then can I start expressing myself. I think the two go hand in hand together. And if anything, uh, most of the techniques you think maybe you need to improve, if you've got it right once, uh, you're pretty much got it down, you know, it will maybe become more subtle and more uh, nuanced with time, but you're good enough, you know, just feel free to paint the thing that actually inspires you. Um, and like, don't paint this if you don't like it, don't, don't follow this process at all. Uh, if that you don't find that kind of a subject uh, attractive for painting, you know, don't don't paint any of my cars. Uh, I'm very much alone in this uh, uh, car car hobby, uh, car painting hobby. Um, you know, that's very me. Um, so here I'm adding a bit more of these lines. You know, where where I felt like it will improve the structure. I'm trying not to overdo it because uh, I do tend to sometimes overdo just a few of these linear details uh, and it ends up making things a little stiff. Uh, so I'm keeping it to a minimum. I'm going to sign this, but before we uh, end the process, let me show you. So I have two pencils here. One's a little warm and one's a little uh, is, is neutral. Uh, the Faber Castle. I don't know exactly what these are. It's like pastel pencils. Uh, and I found that these work really well for adding highlights, uh, especially highlights you'd like to blend. So one thing I like to do, I'm going to put this layer and then I'll use some uh, tissue to blend it to create almost an underwash that's a little blended. And then on top 
top of that, I'll add a sharper one as well. Uh, so it's a, a nice feeling to, it's a nice way to convey a smooth edge because it's pastels, it, it gets smeared pretty easily if you use a paper towel or, or even your finger, anything like that. Uh, and look at how much, again, it pop it gives uh, the onions, how it puts the shadows in the right context. It's kind of a very easy fix that I started using uh, lately. And I find that in many contexts it works better for me than uh, using opaque watercolor paint even. Um, you can use the paper's texture to your advantage to uh, blend it a bit. It's just a really fun tool to use. Uh, and with that, here's the final result. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Let me say a few couple of, uh, couple of words before we wrap it up. So there you have it, my impression the way I see this reference and the thing that attracted me to paint it. I often find that to be temperature differences, vibrant colors, strong light, light and shadow conditions. Now I want to show you uh, the thing that actually inspired me to paint this one is this painting, which everything went exactly like I planned. I will show a scan also on the screen. Uh, and I could not recapture that exact accuracy and immediacy with this painting, which goes to show, you know, Sometimes it's it's really not up to us, but the one thing that is up to you is paint what you love, paint the thing that moves you to paint it, uh, and don't listen to me, you know, find the thing that works for you, don't even listen to this, it's not a necessarily advice to uh, follow. If I inspire you to do something, then that's something within you, that's something that happened within you, you felt inspired, which means it is real. That's the most important thing, I think. Uh, so I will thank you so much for watching so far. Ruth is barking. Check out the Frustration Free Watercolor course if you want to learn how to let go. Enjoy the painting process. Paint how you want and allow paint to do its thing. Move out of its way. Let the colors and water do their thing. Be sure to check it out. Thank you so, so much. Thank you to everyone who supports me over on Patreon. If you want to receive credit at the end of the video, you can support me. Any tier you choose there will grant you that. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.